Hi, I'm Kristen. And I'm Jen. And we're speech pathologists at Therapy Playground. And today we are going to talk about feeding in the infant, focusing on breast and bottle. Kristen, can you tell us some of the basics of infant feeding and swallowing? Sure. Well, infant feeding is not a solely learned behavior. It's actually a neural developmental skill, meaning that a child needs to get to a certain maturity level in order to effectively feed. Now, Research has shown us that in feeding, the child completes what's known as a suck, swallow, breathe sequence. Now, this sequence is not fully intact generally until the age of 37 weeks gestation. So, what they would do at 37 weeks gestation, ideally, in this swallow is you will integrate the muscles of the cheeks, the jaw, the lips, later on, the tongue and the palate to propel a bolus back to the pharynx and reflexively swallow. Now at that point, you're also going to have in conjunction the muscles of the pharynx, the larynx, and the esophagus to go ahead and complete that swallow. Um, and an important thing to remember, during this time, breathing stops during the swallow. So at the point of the swallow, there's definitely no breathing. So you mentioned preemies, 37 weekers and below, um, you know, and babies nowadays can be born at, you know, 24 weeks and um, go in the NICU. And I know that the majority of the NICU stay is going to be focused on that safe feeding. Um, can you tell us about the potential population other than preemies? Right. Well, as far as preemies go, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, their reflexes of sucking and swallowing are intact. Um, however, they don't have that coordination with breathing, so at that point, they're forced to decide between eating and between breathing. So that is what poses that potential problem. In addition to that, um, if you take into account the structures that we've already talked about, any type of child with a craniofacial um, anomaly, such as, say, cleft palate, would experience potential feeding difficulties. That, in addition to syndromes that involve um, respiratory, that involve cardiac issues, that involve, again, the structures of the face, all could possibly promote a feeding difficulty. Um, those children who've been intubated for long periods of time or who are also ventilator dependent, um, drug babies typically have issues with feeding as well. So the mom gets the baby home and is realizing that there's some problems with feeding and they meet with a speech pathologist to evaluate the suck, swallow, breathe pattern. Um, how do you assess readiness for feedings by mouth? Okay, well most importantly what you want to look for is a stable medical diagnosis at that point. Um, physiologically they need to be able to obtain um, consistent respiratory rate, heart rate, oxygenation. Um, they need to be able to do this at rest and then upon handling as well. Um, they would also need to be able to achieve um, a good state of arousal. You don't want to feed a baby that is super drowsy and sleeping or the baby that is crying and, and screaming. Um, ideally what we would say is you want to feed at a quiet alert state. Um, in addition to that, you also have hunger behaviors that you're looking for, which in our case here, it would be rooting and sucking, um, bringing the mouth open and closing as if, mm -hmm. as if trying to feed. Um, and then finally, you wanna take a look in, at their non-nutritive suck, meaning sucking on a pacifier or on a finger. Um, they should be able to kind of sustain that suck a little bit, um, provided a little bit of negative pressure, they're able to keep it in their mouth. Um, if you look at all these things and it seems like it's a go, then it's okay to begin feeding. Okay. So, um, as a new mom, you know, I've been a speech pathologist 10 years and I bring this little baby home and I've got a feeder. And I really, we, the breast was not successful and so we transitioned to syringe mm -hmm. and then we went to the bottle. But um, even with the bottle, she had uh, open mouth posture, she lost a lot of fluid, um, sopped up the bib after five minutes. Um, but I just thought that was normal because I had, you know, I didn't have any other experience really with a baby that was my own. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what normal 
feeding, uh, bottle feeding is going to look like? Sure. Well, normal feeding, what we would typically look for to start out is you kind of take a look at the child and you assess them. You look at their posture. You look at their muscle tone. Are they very rigid in their face? Um, do they have low tone? Is their mouth hanging open? Typically, a child should be breathing through their nose with a closed mouth position. So you're going to want to go ahead and look at that. Next, you want to, upon presentation of the nipple, the bottle, or the breast, um, that baby should be able to draw that readily into his mouth, his or her mouth, and begin sucking. And that's where the suck, swallow, breathe sequence that we had talked about begins. Now, the way it was explained to me is it looks almost as if it's a dance. It should be rhythmic. It should be um, consistent over time. Um, sucking bursts are things that we look for, meaning the suck, swallow, breathe sequence is going to occur throughout a certain amount of time. In a normal developing child, typically that is 10 to 30 times before that baby pauses for a little break and then they begin again. But there shouldn't be any wide variations in, in these pauses. Um, we want to make sure that we don't see any spillage coming out. We want to make sure that throughout this feeding, that this synchrony still takes place and you don't notice any significant fatigue factors and you don't notice any agitation or changes in state with the child. So what would we look for specifically with breastfeeding that might not be present with bottle feeding? Well, due to the, physio the physiology of milk production, um, we know that um, letdown sometimes doesn't happen immediately. So what you may see is that non-nutritive sucking going on in the beginning with this child on the breast. So it might take a little bit longer before you see the longer drawn out sucks um, of the nutritive feed going on. Um, you may also notice intermittent pauses of non-nutritive non sucking and there is a wider variation of that suck, swallow, breathe sequence with breastfeeding. I know I talked about with my daughter, one of the red flags that I saw was that open mouth posture um, during the feed and just the poor sucking motion that she had. What are some uh, red flags that parents can look for um, that would alert them to the fact that maybe more investigation needs to happen? Okay, well some state, um, some red flags are actually very obvious and some are much less obvious. Um, changes in state, I think, sometimes are hard to look for. Um, in feeding a child, sometimes you will notice this child who averts their gaze. They're often, they're looking out somewhere else. There's some facial twitching going on or a raising of the eyebrows. Um, finger splaying is another big one. Um, in general, the child just subtly grows uncomfortable, and you can tell. Mm -hmm. um, now, some more obvious signs during feeding would be the spillage, like you mentioned, um, any coughing or choking or clicking sounds during that feed, um, clearly any changes in color, um, mm -hmm. any obvious changes in respiration rate, heart rate if you have um, access to that information at that time. Um, feedings that last longer than a half an hour are typically something that should alert you to is there a potential problem here. What about hiccups? Hiccups can also be another factor, yes, definitely. Um, I know every child's different, and so until you see the child in front of you, you don't know what therapy strategies you're going to use right. to help them, but can you give us some treatment strategies um, that are basic that you would employ with any feed, any child that came to you for feeding therapy? Um, sure. Like you said, every child is very different, so what works on one may not work on another. Um, but in general, what you would, you would do is create a calm feeding environment, first of all. And you want to get that child in that right state, hopefully, the quiet alert state that we talked about for feeding. Um, in addition to that, you would also want to, uh, let's say, you've got a child, I know for, with my son, he had severe reflux, and so there was a position issue with him right. um, that I, I needed to really deal with that and have him upright and um, 
facing away from everyone. Right, positioning is definitely a factor um, with children who are hyper alert, who require much less stimulation around them. Um, children who actually have pooling in the fairing, sometimes you want to go ahead and feed in a sideline position. Um, and like you said, upright for a clutch palate to prevent any kind of nasal regurgitation or anything coming out of the nose. That's definitely not something that you would like to see. Um, there are also variations as far as nipples go. Um, all mouths are different with children for different reasons. There are nipples for, made of different, there are different pliability, different flow rates. Um, something to keep in mind is that up until the third month, sucking is reflexive. So if you've got a child with a fast flow rate nipple and they're suck, suck, sucking and for whatever reason they are unable to tolerate that, they're going to be drowning in there. Right. So you're going to see that liquid pouring out mm -hmm. of their mouth. So at that point, you would want to switch the nipple to maybe a slower flow nipple to see if that would help. Um, you also we can thicken liquids to help control that bolus to push it back further in the mouth without escaping throughout the sides. Um, there are also instances where you are able to provide manual um, pressure to the cheeks and underneath the jaw to help with closure around that nipple. Um, in severe cases, there are also systems that we use, supplemental nursing systems, where you can actually uh, attach tubing to the underside of your finger where you can directly um, manipulate how much liquid that that child is getting for severe cases where you're really worried about aspiration. So you would recommend if a parent saw any of these red flags or there was a problem with weight gain, uh, they would go to their pediatrician and the parent could definitely ask for a referral to a speech pathologist with a specialty in infant feeding. Right. All of that taken into account, um, difficulty with weight gain, a history of respiratory infections or pneumonia even, these are all signs that may be an indication that your child has a feeding problem. Great. Is there anything else you'd like to share that we haven't covered? Um, no, basically, I think the best thing that you can do with a child is create that calm environment, um, take into account the, the nipple and any type of feeding instructions that possibly a therapist has given you for that child. But most importantly, what you need to do is follow the infant's cues. And that would be the things that we talked about, looking at those subtle cues. Um, and watch for them to make sure that they don't tire easily because in the end feeding should be an enjoyable experience for both the child and the caregiver. It should continue to be a bonding experience. Right. Yes. yes. Very important. Well thank you Kristen for all that great information. I hope you all enjoyed listening to this podcast and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.